Hey guys, 9.04 p.m. September 13th, 2017. I have you here on a radar chart, and I felt that this was a good opportunity to explain uh, what wind shear was. There was a few comments asking about wind shear. Um, they've been talking about it on the Weather Channel, and it's something that Jose is currently going through right now. Um, and believe it or not, wind shear is a strong force. These are winds that are... Uh, probably around 30,000 feet and higher up in the sky, so we're talking very strong winds. These are also considered uh, global winds. They're basically the main steering of our currents and our jet stream and stuff like that. So they're pretty constant. They do uh, fluctuate. They do change. Um, one thing I want to explain really quick is how the hurricanes are formed and why shear winds play a big part. So in a nutshell, very quick, very basic explanation, um, a group of storms will form off of Africa, the west coast here. They will move out into the ocean around the Verde Islands, the Cape Verde Islands. And then um, what determines whether or not these storms begin to cling together in order to create a tropical depression or a tropical storm is wind shear. So there's a big wind that's always moving uh, basically from east to west in this area and many times these winds are strong enough to rip these storms apart before they can form but um, when the the proper ideal conditions are around those storms will not be ripped apart and that's when we get hurricanes so Jose has dealt with wind shear in the past it actually had to in order to be birthed into a hurricane but once again, it is dealing with wind shear, and I want to show you an option here on Ventu Sky that basically allows you to see um, the drastic difference between surface winds and shear winds. Shear winds, like I said, they're very high up. We're going to use the 9,000 meter setting here, so we're talking about 27,000 feet, give or take. Now look at the difference here. You can barely even see the east coast these winds are so drastic but basically picture Jose in this area and these are winds these move just like the jet stream does so they change shape um, this one happens to be going up and then coming down right on top of Jose and the reason we know this is because of this if you look at this it almost looks like picture um, a comet or something okay and we're moving this way so all the debris is flying off the back side so basically there's this wind hitting the north side of Jose causing this thin grouping here you see uh, very thin green then thin yellow and then it gets to our red down here it's very thick yellow very thick green very thick blue and so on so basically picture the wind blowing on this okay and you can almost see ripples in it and that's those are actually ripples from the shear winds I took a snapshot for you I'll show you this one you can get to see the ripples really well here so basically picture picture blowing into a fan um, in the opposite direction you kinda get that brrr, you know when you blow into a fan or you can alter your voice it's the same exact concept here so basically you have Jose trying to rotate in its counterclockwise normal motion like uh, hurricanes in the Atlantic do and then you have a northern wind blowing against that so you're getting these ripples um, Jose's getting beat up uh, I heard one reference it looks like a jellyfish that kinda looks true but here's the thing guys the reason Jose's not getting ripped up by these winds is because it's already been a hurricane these are already multiple big uh, storms that were uh, grouped together so this isn't as easy as tearing apart a few thunderstorms trying to form this is already a formed mass so that is important when dealing with shear winds now these winds may in fact bring this thing down to a tropical storm but again guys we're still moving south uh, currently Jose still 75 miles per hour so it's still cat one we're at 988 in the pressure so it went up a little bit technically got a little weaker um, the video I made this morning it was actually a little stronger than it was the night before that so basically these winds are affecting it but they're not killing it and it's expected to be in these winds again for another day or two but the only the issue we have after that is once Jose gets enough to the south is what I'm trying to say it's gonna get back into this path where these hurricanes leave the the west side of Africa here they start moving to the west across this line and the reason it's basically like a line they follow is because of the Bermuda Atlantic pressure that I'm always talking about so basically these hurricanes form and they rarely go up in this area so they're forced this way and then once they meet other pressures like we've been talking about for the last two weeks the jet stream pressures in the in the Gulf that determines whether or not these storms go up the east or go into the Gulf so right now 
Jose is basically holding on for dear life by the sheer winds beating up on it. It's just not letting go, though. And also, one thing that I found interesting was the fact that not only is it getting beat up and holding its place, but it's exploding with major thunderstorms here. So, basically, when I was explaining the creation or the formation of hurricanes, it's when those storms all group together, they start to... There was a, there's an updraft coming from the center of this area, and they explode, the clouds explode out, and you can actually see this on radar, and that's how you know that this thing's gaining power. So what we have here is a weird situation. We have shear winds hitting it and rippling through it, which would basically rip apart any other storm that was trying to form, but again, since Jose is already a formed mass, it's holding strong. And not only that, but these str these storms here are getting stronger. So it's it's a little confusing to me how it's losing energy, but then producing these very big storms. So it might be in the in a period of transition where if we had a little more data, we can really see what's going on. Um, now, uh, with this map here, I kind of like this for this example because you can still see how... Jose, in the beginning of the frame, when it starts over here, it still has a semi-movement where it's moving in a counterclockwise motion like hurricanes do. But then right towards the end, you can see um, it kind of gets bumped. It almost looks like it gets bumped and it wobbles. But then see those explosions there? They look like explosions. Those are storms being pushed from the middle, basically from the surface of the ocean up through the center and to the sky. When you see that, that usually means that these storms are getting bigger and they're getting stronger. So it, not only is it getting hit with shear winds, it's also producing big thunderstorms. You can see the ripples there at the end in the frame. Right there. You can see it ripple through. So you can see the wind basically blowing over the top of this thing, but it's not giving into it. And all it's doing is it's pushing it farther and farther south. You can even see some of these bands are hitting the islands now. They're getting uh, surf from this, they're getting swells, all sorts of things. Um, nothing like crazy weather yet, but um, guys, according to the models, they were expecting this thing to start heading west already, um, but it's very far south now. And if we get below this line, this 20 degree line here, we're talking super warm water. And then when you mix that with this uh, east to west path that moves down in this area that flows these hurricanes, we're talking almost a recycle of Jose. It could catch this, and it could be sent right through this area once again. So, uh, again, the, the video I made this morning about how low Jose would go, that was the point of that video, because the lower Jose goes, the more powerful it has the potential to become. Now, even if we might wake up tomorrow and this thing could have shifted to the west and started making its east coast approach, um, but the thing with that is, is we have some unusual warm water right in this area right now where my mouse is, and then once you get past about Virginia and into Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, New York area, and then and north, it's a little cooler. So as long as Jose's down in here, we have the probability of it uh, getting stronger, which I think is going to happen as soon as some of these winds l uh, let up. You can see this loop here is moving slightly to the east. Eventually, it's going to move um, out of the way of Jose, and those shear winds are going to stop. And basically, like I said before, when you blow into a fan um, on the opposite way, it makes that ripple noise, just like these are rippling here. And then when you stop blowing, the fan regains its momentum, and it starts spinning again. So that's the same concept here, guys. So these wind shears are hitting Jose. It's causing it to slow down a little bit. It's it's uh, alternating in pressures. But the thing we need to look for are these exploding thunderstorms. And that right there tells us that this still has a good formation. And it's still uh, sucking the uh, warm water and wind up through the middle of it. It still has a formation, even though you don't see that classic hurricane spin. So basically what I'm saying is once these winds let off, and once Jose's further, uh, far enough south, you're going to see it pick back up again with its spin. And it's going to be a counterclockwise spin. And then once it does that, it's going to settle. And then you're going to see it start moving as if it was any other hurricane. And that's what's so interesting about this storm, guys. Not only the fact that it's been around so long already following Irma and reacting to it, but the fact that it's been through so many things that, that usually destroy hurricanes or just put them in very awkward positions, which this one has been. I mean, guys, this thing went north. It hung out for a little bit. It's being pushed down by sh uh, strong shear winds and still not getting ripped apart. So that tells you right there that the core of this storm is very, very dense. It's very strong. 
and it's not it's not letting up to these winds. That was why I made the thumbnail the way I did. And it's really it's just really cool on this map that you can see the ripples going through it. So we're dealing with even though it's a category one storm, guys, categories uh measure basically the wind speed of storms. It doesn't measure the uh energy they have packed in them. Um, because clearly we can see it here. We didn't see explosions like this when it was up in this area, but once it interacted with the warm water, you see these big red explosions, and those are actually cloud tops, guys. It's the same thing as a thunderstorm. If you see, um, you can even watch the formation of hurricanes over time on satellite. You'll see these clouds bubbling up here, some bubbling up there, and there, and there, and blah, 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 and then eventually they start grouping together. And then once they do that, they have enough mass to start spinning, and it's basically one object with a center mass. So they're revolving all around the center, and that's what forms hurricanes, like I said, in a nutshell. So basically, guys, that's what I wanted to cover right now. Here's a recap. Like I said, Jose is going through a wind shear event at the moment. There's big winds coming up and then hitting down on it, which is why it's being forced to the south. We have a pressure bubble here, not allowing it to go out into the Atlantic and disappear. And then we have a high pressure coming through the Gulf, which will deny Jose the route through the Gulf. So that's some relief for the people in the Gulf. Again, this is a ways out. Things can change. But these are all the different pieces of information and the reason why every, every model now expects Jose to move up the East Coast. Now, what's going to determine whether where it hits whether it's New York or Chesapeake Bay or as low as maybe the Carolinas is going to be how long it takes for this wind shear pressure to move past Jose um, it's not killing Jose Jose's surviving it and you guys you saw the ripples so um, the data is there to show that Jose is still a very strong storm um, it's a surviving storm and we just need to wait and see uh, the weekend is going to be very important um, I, in my opinion, the most important point is when we start seeing it turn west, heading in a west direction, because then it's basically, uh, it's as if it never went up in this area, it's back down here, it's recycled, it's got energy, and then it's going to be just a hurricane that we need to watch. And once it starts going west, that's when I'm really going to start focusing again on the jet stream, because we'll have a better idea within five days of where those steering winds are going to take this thing. And right now, guys, the models are adjusting. They are starting to adjust far to the east. Uh, here's the Euro model, the one known for predicting Irma the best. Uh, this was the model that was aimed right at Miami. Uh, within a day, it changed, but it's still the most eastern model. And a lot of people trust it. And I've noticed on the Weather Channel that they went from talking about this model nonstop because of how good it was with Irma to almost avoiding it now because it's the only model that shows a direct hit to the East Coast. So it's a little weird with the mentality going on. Um, you know, that's all I know about that. Uh, but again, guys, here's Jose. Uh, still Category 1. Pressure went up a little bit, so technically it got a little weaker. But the... The show of these big, big explosion storms show that this thing is very much intact, and all it's waiting for is for those shear winds to stop, and then it's going to, just like a fan that you stop blowing on, it's going to regain its power and it's going to start spinning again. So don't be surprised when you see these bands, guys. It's going to happen, um, whether it's going to be a tropical storm or a Cat 1. By the time it reaches land, we don't know. That all depends on how far south it goes. Uh, I hope I didn't talk too fast. I hope you guys understood that. If you don't, please leave questions down below. I try to get to every single question. I try to answer everybody. Um, I do my best to do that. I think it's important. That's the whole point of this. And guys, if you uh, again, if you have any questions about this map, I will send you a link to it. I'll explain to you how to read it. But again, basics. These are explosions going on. Think of explosions. Those are storms. That is proving that Jose is still a very functioning storm. And all we're waiting for is this right here this line is going to move to the east and it's going to free up jose and then jose is going to start spinning again all right guys tomorrow morning is another day i will have an update for you i hope you all have a good night talk to you later